We invite people into the community and we create a space where it's safe, where people can exchange their stories and explore their creativity. And to me it was something I had really never experienced before, this sort of cross-cultural bonding. Um, it, was, it seemed to me to be a very unique experience to have very, very diverse cultures such as the Japanese American, the Mexican American, and the African American, plus the Muslim American communities together in one event, you know, sharing their stories. We've done several of these projects, one in Detroit, uh, one in Watts, one in Boyle Heights. And I've been involved with some of the Japanese American activists after 9-11 and they really were the first ones that reached out to the Muslim community which meant so much to me and to my family and my friends. It helped me to get in touch with even my own culture as a Japanese American to have more interest in Japanese culture through spirituality. I learned a lot also about the Native American Indian culture and then also the Hispanic culture you know and it's they're all beautiful. This particular workshop was perfect for bringing people in like me that maybe have no experience that there's not like real high expectations in terms of our performance. Everyone within a circle has something to give you know regardless whether they're experienced or not that every single person has something to to really teach everyone. The point is to listen and to, to build a bridge even though that person may not come to your religion or you may not come to their religion it's going to make you healthier and, and, and more whole. What are those beats for? These, in Islamic tradition, they're prayer beats to remember the divine. And you, what are your beats for? Oh, in Buddhism, we chant with these 108 beats to take away our negative traits. I'm a monk, so I do the sermon and kind of storytelling stuff, but it's little different. <laughs> this time um, I have to act a little bit <laughs> and I don't have an acting career. <laughs> My technique is sort of using a lot of movement um, because I believe that our bodies carry the memory and I like to sort of liberate the memory from the body and free, free people from the self-consciousness of uh, just sitting there and intensely thinking that they need to uh, communicate their, their stories. You have to start from something really more basic, more fun, more freeing. And then you get people relaxed and they are willing to share and dig deeper within themselves to find stories that they, maybe they never even thought they had. I came to the workshop and to tell you the truth, I immediately fell at home. I was inspired. I had never met Nobuko before, and I loved the way she run the workshop. I liked the, the, um, the way it was broken up to kind of stretch first, then we would, do, we would go around, we'd do a few things, then we would do a creative writing assignment. Some people might think, oh, they're just walking around, but you know, even in walking around, we're recognizing each other, we're recognizing each other's body language or recognizing each other, how we work, you know, what, what different attitudes people come with, you know, or what people, people can express to be able to not only just speak, you know, our stories, but to, you know, to show it through our whole being. I cannot speak English very well, so, so I, I was a little bit quiet because if I feel something, if I want to say something, but I can't, so just I want to be quiet, but do something and feeling each other so just, we don't, we don't need language a lot. Afrique, from Port de Pay, Haiti. Kijon ye petit moen, Africando, to El Soco, Santo Domingo. Como ta, papi? My grandfather cutting sugar cane for 11 cents a day. As an orphan, my brave vuela crossed the border to Tucson, Arizona with her brothers and sisters, riding her burro named Yolene. We did another set of workshops that we wanted to hear stories from the community outside of these 10 or 12 people that we were working with. So we had a, a meeting at Senshin in which we uh, 
open it up to the community at large just to come for one time and share for a few hours a few st some of their stories. And we had some very interesting moments and deep moments there too with people who were total strangers. To me it was really making that sort of rhetoric of let's, let's unite and let's unite diverse communities. It was really making it a reality and really actually bringing different people together on a weekly basis, um, sharing food. Some of the other members fasted during the run, month of Ramadan and we broke fast together. Pluralism has been a struggle, but if we're going to get along as Americans, then that effort, we have to make that effort. And we have to respect our, our, each other's voices. I mean, you're absolutely forging this larger-than-life picture. You're no longer just worried about your community and your stories and what's happening to you. You're seeing that this happens to other people in other communities. Art is, a, is an act of gift-giving, you know, and, um, and oftentimes people, you know, feel that art is just, you know, for art's sake. And for me, just when I see that art actually has some sort of potential to create change, um, if, especially with the, an individual person, if I see that or I hear that one person was really touched or transformed by any of our pieces, then I know that our work was done. When healing is the purpose, if you have that intention, then you can deal with the heavier things and, and, and with each other. The important thing is creating a space for this to happen. It's like that's what we're doing. It's so simple in a way. Uh, and it can be done in many places. It's just setting the intention and creating the space for this kind of thing to happen. Our stories are the maps of our lives. Our stories open hearts. Our stories break boundaries. Our stories connect us to all human kind, reminding us we are all relations. Aho. Salam Shalom Aleikum.